Hey friends, Pastor Tony here, and I get to be the Connections Pastor here at VCKC. I'm excited to share a few thoughts with you on the cave confrontation between David and Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 24. The first thought that comes to mind is how David's men in verse 4 and David in verse 10 and 11 agree. It seems that it does appear the Lord delivered Saul into David's hands to be killed. But David, through an incredible act of honor and self-control, chose to recognize that the Lord's anointing on Saul's life was more important than himself, even though Saul was seeking to kill him. That's mind-blowing to me, because we see that in verse 5, David had the drop on Saul and could have rid himself of all the problems he faced. He could have seized the throne for himself, but instead in verse 8, he bowed and lay prostrate before Saul, making him vulnerable to Saul's attacks, even risking death, acknowledging that Saul is his Lord and King. Can you imagine having your enemies in your crosshairs and choosing God's anointing over all external pressure of your friends, over the anxiety of being hunted down and killed, and the frustration of not being king yet? Guys, how often do we trust our ability to take advantage of an opportunity instead of waiting on the Lord's perfect timing? I have a story for you. Many moons ago, before I became a pastor, it was spoken over me by many people that I would one day become pastor. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was anointed by my pastor, called into the ministry, and man, was I excited. But soon after, a spiritual war broke out all around me, and it was intense. My pastor, unlike Saul, fully supported me, but others did not. They placed barriers in my way, effectively blocking me by becoming a pastor. At that time, the men I were leading, my army, was pushing me to break off and start a church under the promise that they would follow me into ministry. Like David in verse 7, I told them no and chose to stay submitted to all my bosses, trusting that God would make good on his word to me through my pastor, allowing God to be my vindicator. Friends, it took nearly a decade of honoring my bosses with no rebellion, loving people well, and trusting God even in dark times before I was blessed, appointed as a pastor, and sent out. It was extremely challenging for me to walk out those years, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I held in there until God's promises came to pass. David's faith and righteousness perplexed Saul, so much so that by the end of it all in verses 16 through 20, Saul wept. He called David more righteous than himself and spoke of David's mercy ultimately confessing that David will one day be king of Israel, which was spoken to him through the Lord by prophet Samuel. How would our relationships look if we allowed the righteousness and mercy of God to win out over our lives? Is, what's wild is the audacity of Saul to request that David spare his descendants in verse 21. What's even wilder to me is that David swears an oath in verse 22 to do just that. Man, David's posture in this passage is everything. His character in, the, in this moment reminds me of Matthew 5:41. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with them too. David already acted generously by sparing Saul's life, but it took one step further by swearing an oath to not cut off his descendants. What does it mean for you to not only show respect for who God anointed, but also to preserve that anointing. It's one thing to honor God, but to honor those who are seeking to destroy you are two very different things. David said in verse 11, there is no evil or rebellion in my hands, and I have not sinned against you, though you are lying in wait for my life to take it. Here's a thought. What if we didn't respond to the world around us the way the world responded to us? What if we chose not to allow our enemies to be enemies in our eyes, but instead we chose to honor them, particularly those who rule over us? Have you ever been in the position where you were more qualified at your job than another person, and they became your boss and you were asked to train them? What was your posture towards that situation? Were you more like David, humbly submitted, or were you more like Saul, who sought to sabotage that person by not helping or withholding your support? My final thoughts is this. I can understand a little more why David is called a man after God's own heart.
back in 1 Samuel 13. Because he was a man of faith. He believed God more than himself. He was humbled and honored because he bowed to a man that was trying to take his life. And lastly, he was a man that trusted the Lord completely because he could have killed Saul but didn't, choosing instead to honor him because he was God's anointed. This passage has become alive to me in more ways than one. Walking through this passage with you has made it all the richer for me, and I hope it has done the same for you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the grace to suffer well when it comes to not mishandling your anointing on us and on others. Master, teach us your way, that when we're faced with opportunities for self-promotion, that we choose your righteousness over the desire for comfort and security. Father, help us to trust you more than the circumstances and challenges we face every single day. We love you, we trust you, and honor you above all things, including ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.